I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Continuing with our look at Azure governance, last time we covered part one of the Azure Monitor, and today we're going to pick it up with part two. So where we had left off, uh, just to catch you up, was we had already discussed all of the main ways that you integrate and use the Azure Monitor, but now we're left with the question of how do I get all my data into the monitor so that I could do something with it? So for that, we're going to start off with diagnostic settings. So opening this up, looking at uh, all of my subscriptions, and see that I have some diagnostic settings enabled and some not enabled. Okay, so let's take uh, something like my Azure Migrate. Okay, so this is already set up, so I can go ahead and hit Edit Settings here just to give you an example of what it looks like. And basically, every one of these is going to have the same three objects normally. And the first one is send to log analytics. Now, this is going to be where I'm capturing specific data, and that data could be all metric data. Okay, that's the way it's listed in some resources, which we'll see. And how long I want to retain this data, up to a year. And then additionally, I have the option of storing it longer than that in my storage account. So these things that are stored for only four days, no problem. After four days, they'll be flushed out of Log Analytics, but they'll be in my storage account for long-term storage. The third option here is one that I can't really implement in my environment because uh, of what it all really would need to make it shine, and that is streaming it to an event hub. Now, we looked at this in the Security Center under Security Solutions, and we're going to go to here to the SIM and hit Add. The Security Center piece here you can kind of ignore because this is where the magic really happens. In the Azure Monitor, we take all of our event log data, all of those activities, and we forward them to a event hub, and then from there, you have your SIM connector so you can get the data back into your current SIM tools. Okay, so that's kind of how that process all works. So going back to the monitor, do diagnostic settings. Uh, let me pick on uh, this network card. And you can see here, the only log analytics data that you can capture is all metrics. Okay, but you can additionally send it to a storage account or to an event hub as well. Okay, now I don't have a event hub currently in my environment, so I can't set that up for you, um, but I don't have anywhere to send the data anyway, so I never set it up. But that's basically what you do. So once you have uh, all of your diagnostics set up, and that is a good best practice, I spin up and destroy these things regularly, but what you could do is there are some things like in Azure Policy, that can do this for you. So if I go to my policy definitions, diagnostics. So apply diagnostic settings for network security groups. So something like this uh, we looked at in our policy video, but it's basically where you're going to say uh, every NSG that I deploy, make sure that it has diagnostic settings enabled, and then it's going to be uh, using uh, this particular storage account with this NSG, with this workspace, with this piece of information, whatever it is that, that it needs. And then you kick all that data off, and then so that's a policy that lives in your world so that you don't have to set up diagnostics for network security groups. It's just always going to be on, and it's always going to send the data to the correct place. You can handle it in that way or some other coding through PowerShell, the Azure CLI, or ARM template deployments or whatever your particular favorite tool is like Terraform, etc. Let's go from here to the Azure Advisor section. And we covered this in the Security Center as well. This is where you're going to see recommendations on what's going on in your systems. And then you can take actions or choose to not take those actions. So we've already covered this in detail, so I won't dump into this at this point. Uh, so let's go here under Insights. Now, in Insights, this is where we gain more information about our stuff. So I'll go to Virtual Machines, and I've got one VM that's currently onboarded with this and another VM that is not. But this uh, Getting Started view, this Health view, shows high-level 
this is what's going on. Now I have uh, two VMs that are currently in critical condition. Oh no, something's going on. Well, the particular thing going on with these is these VMs spend most of their time turned off. The agent hasn't been running, so they're in a critical state. So once the agent is online, it goes through a health check or two, then that'll iron itself out if I leave them turned on. Additionally, you can gain more information about your systems by going to performance. Now, this is where we need a little bit of extra help from agents. And these are agents that will run inside the operating system of your VMs. So to show you uh, which one in particular has it and which one doesn't, go to my jump server and you can see this is also in the VM blade. So we'll gain insights here and we'll go to performance. And as you can see, we've got a direct link to the Azure monitor as well as diagnostics that we can run all from here in the cloud. And then we can look at all different kinds of this data and figure out uh, what we want to do and how what our, our view is going to be. Okay, so you can see more amounts of data that are here and as you mouse over this wherever you have your line on the chart then it's going to show data related to that specific field of data so this is CPU utilization here's where CPU utilization actually happened there was nothing happening uh, back here and then over time you had this and this is all pulling in the the 50th percentile 90th percentile all of that kind of stuff that I've selected up here I could just do something like the average okay and then I would have there's my CPU average over time. Okay, so you just craft the data however you like. The other nice thing about having the agent is you can get a map view. Now, this particular VM right now is running, and I am currently running on it 19 processes that are using ports across the system. Okay, and it's talking to other servers, and it's talking to, in this case, on port 443, 14 other servers as well as on port 80 to these servers, as well as port uh, 32526 to this server. Okay, so you can see a lot of communication that's happening across this VM. So if I just collapse this for a little better view. So this is a great place to come in and see that the communication that I'm expecting isn't taking place. So if, for example, you wanted this system to be able to talk to your domain controller, and your domain controller is online, and you're trying to, to log on to their jump box, which should be talking to your DC, but it's not. And you can see that data over this last period of time. Okay, and then you can customize whatever the range is that you're looking at as well. Okay, so if I pull back a little bit here, you can see some more of the port information from what I was doing. This is when it came back online, was talking to my domain controller, so you can see all these DC ports that are all here. But within the last 30 minutes, the system has not had to talk to the domain controller, so the data may or may not be here anymore. So this is when we have the agent installed. Let me go to my domain controller and go back to insights. Okay, and you can see we have the basic health data that's here, and that's just for having an Azure resource. But under performance, it's going to ask us to add the agent so that we can store this data in the Azure Log Analytics. So I'm gonna enable this, and it's gonna tell us here that it will take between 20 to 30 minutes to do this. This all is something that I would suggest that you do uh, through automation, so it's built as your VMs are built, if you're interested in using this, so that you can have that all done, so you can see this kind of information, aggregate that in your solutions, do your reporting and analytics based on all of that. So a lot of these monitoring blades are in each one of the resources. So this is the one for virtual machines, under storage accounts, okay, there's the monitoring stuff for storage accounts, okay, and there are some still some uh, classic stuff if you're using classic storage accounts as well. Okay, and most resources would have that kind of information. Okay, and here it is in the key vault. Basically, every kind of resource that we can do monitoring and analytics on is going to have a part in the blade that has that. So you could do it at the individual systems, do it at the monitor, however you prefer to, to tackle that problem. But then once it's all set up, you can look at it still 
from the individual resource. So if you're in the VM blade, there's no reason to leave. You're already here. Look at the particular information. Or if you're in the network, look at the information there. And if not, then you can just go to the monitoring workspace and filter down to find a thing that you're concerned about. Okay, and that brings us to the last thing that we're going to discuss uh, as far as this goes, and that would be the network insights, because this brings us to a totally separate tool. This is the network watcher. Now the network watcher has to be enabled for whatever regions you're going to use it in, and I've got it enabled in these subscriptions partially, which means that there are some regions I'm not monitoring, and that's as it should be because one of my policies in my environment says I can only deploy stuff in these subscriptions to regions within the United States. So I don't want this enabled everywhere because I don't need it. So in the network watcher, we can look at topology of your networks. So if we pull this up and we go to the Azure Academy and we've got our virtual network here, we can see the layout of our VNet, subnets, what gateways we have, connections, and all the endpoints that are there. So these are all route tables and I've got a public IP, an NSG, a couple VMs, and NICs. Okay, so that's the kind of info that you can get from topology. Now, with the connection monitor and the network performance monitor, these require agents because these are doing things inside the operating system. And that's a general theme here, whether it's security center, monitor, log analytics, whatever it is, uh, network watcher. If you want in-OS data, we need an agent because we do not go into your operating systems without your express approval through an agent and then it only does what uh, has been prescribed for that agent to do. Now under uh, the network and diagnostic tools we have IP flow verify. Now this is very helpful if you're trying to diagnose what's going on in a connection. I'm supposed to be able to talk to this thing. It's not working. Why is that? So what I can say here is if I was trying to talk from this machine, which is my jump server, on a TCP port outbound on port, uh, let's see, 135 to a domain controller on port 135, would this be allowed? So I can run a check. This takes a couple seconds. And we can see that, yes, this is allowed because there's a security rule that says allow VNet outbound access. So what if I change this to my on-prem domain controller? And this is also allowed because I've got my gateway set up and that's allowed to talk to there. All good. But what if I was trying to talk to something else? Let's say I'm trying to talk on port 135 to, uh, to the one DNS servers on port 135. Would that work? Whether or not the other end would accept that kind of port connection, I'm not sure, but I would be allowed to go out because I have a rule that says if you're going to the internet outbound, that's permitted. So I would be able to do that. Now, what if this was inbound? Inbound from 1 on 135. This would be denied because I deny all inbound traffic. Okay, so the only way to get to my virtual network is from my on-premise. So if I want to go out directly from the internet in Azure, I can do that. But nothing can come inbound. Going to next hop. So this is when you're trying to figure out, okay, I, it looks like the traffic is open. It should be allowed. But I don't know why it's not getting there. So we can do something like this. We can say 192.168.0.5 and this should work no problem because they're on the same subnet. And this is a system route. So would it get there? Yes, it's on a virtual network following a system route. So no problem. What if I was going back to my domain controller on-prem? Now this is a gateway route. This is going to hit my public IP address, which I'm blurring out here, but it's going to go out from my Azure Virtual Network gateway. So it's going to follow the gateway route and take whatever path that is. So this is only showing where the next hop is. If I was trying to go back to my on-premise, then it would follow the gateway. So what if I was trying to go to 1.1.1.1, and then again, the internet is also a system route. So where are all these routes? Well, for that, we can look at our network cards. And inside the network cards, we can look at the effective routes. And here's all the routes for this NIC. So if I was going to go to these particular Azure services, it would follow a network service endpoint and those are containing uh, 45 more subnets that aren't listed here and 48 more subnets that aren't listed here that I'm allowed to go to from this virtual network to other Azure services. Or to my Azure Virtual Network Gateway. Again, you can't see my IP because I'm blurring that out. Uh, but then the other routes that happen are either virtual network routes, 
peering routes, internet routes, or no routes. And then there is one other, which is the user-defined route. And that involves uh, route tables, and then you can determine where the traffic is going to take its next hop using that custom route table. That's useful if you want to do something like IP forwarding or have a firewall or other network virtual appliance that you need to funnel traffic over to so it can do something with it, monitor it, or, or send it to some security stack or something else like that. Where is it getting all of these virtual network routes? Well, it's getting them because we, we have our network card living on a subnet and that subnet is part of a virtual network address space. So let's look at our virtual networks. So here's the virtual network for the Azure Academy. And if we look at our address spaces, there they are and they match exactly with our routes. So when you add an address space, what you are doing is really adding routes. And it's the same thing when you add peers. Peers are just routes. So it's saying that this resource ID of a virtual network is allowed to talk in this way to this resource ID virtual network, even if it's across a different subscription. This is all software defined networking. It's just basically allowing routes to happen. Let's go back to the network watcher. Okay, so that was next hop. And then we can look at the effective security rules. And for that, you pick a particular network card. So this is in my Azure Academy. I'll pick this virtual machine. Okay, and if you had more than one NIC for your VM, you could select that here and see what goes on uh, with those different NICs. But these are NSG rules related to this particular VM network card. And I've got a bunch of just-in-time access rules as well as the default rules that are part of the NSG. And here's the rules that allow you to talk out to the service endpoints. Okay, so you can see all of that stuff from here. There's also a VPN troubleshooter, and this is where you can analyze are your VPN gateways and connections healthy, and it's just by checking whatever those connections are and hit start troubleshooting. It takes a few minutes because it's going to analyze everything on the connection, and then if you have any problems, you can go here and look at that or look at the support stuff. So that's a pretty simple one. The only requirement is that you pick a storage account to store the, the data in. Packet capture, it's one that I haven't really used, but this requires you again to do an add and you're going to say that I'm going to do a configuration of this particular kind of packet for this size, for this amount of time, capture that amount of information, add any kind of filtering that I want to. So kind of a, a really light kind of Wireshark kind of interface. And then connection troubleshooting. This is where you can look at a particular virtual machine related to another virtual machine on a specific port or ping and check if you can access it. More than the IP flow verify, this gives us a little more information so we can see which agents are installed in this case and then which source and destinations we had, as well as where the next hop was. In this case, they're on the same subnet, so it went directly there. And then what the latency was and how many probes were sent in this particular job, as well as you can see a topology view of what you're communicating to. Okay, so a bunch of information here in the connection troubleshooter that you can use. And again, you can do this for TCP ports and you can specify the destination and the source port as well. Usage and quotas. This is kind of a, another view from the networking side exclusively on what's going on with how many resources you're using in your subscription. Now, the network watcher itself can only have one network watcher deployed per region per subscription. Okay, so if I have two subscriptions, and I do, if I look at my uh, regular subscription here and then my number two subscription, so see how I have Central US, North US, uh, Europe, all those kind of here. In my second subscription, you can see I've only got Central US and US2 in my network watchers. Okay, so I'm not really using this subscription for a lot of network stuff yet, so uh, I'm doing more app dev stuff in there. But you can also see some other things, like how many route tables you're using, and what your static IP consumption is, and how close you are to hitting any of those quotas. Okay, so as you can see, some of these items, like network interfaces, have a lot of quota. And any one of these quotas are, generally speaking, soft limits. So if you need them raised, it takes just a support ticket, and then you can get that raised pretty easily. So NSG flow logs allow you to figure out what's going on with the 
ingress or egress about stuff that passes through an NSG. So when you set this up, you store that data into a storage account. You tell it how long you want it to be in that storage account, as well as you can enable traffic analysis. And then you can store that data inside a log analytics workspace. Okay, and then inside the log analytics workspace here in traffic analysis. Okay, and if you could click on the map view, which I'm not going to do right now, but if you did, you would see something basically akin to this. Okay, and you can see what's going on in your your particular region okay so this is just a, a graphic from uh, this blog site and you can see what's going on in your subscriptions where you're seeing traffic originating from where you have your deployments all set up and where traffic is hitting you from so if you got some known bad actors trying to hit your systems then you would see that data in here Okay, and then in the virtual subnet topology, you can see how your subnets are all laid out and which ones have connections out to the world through public IP addresses. And then you can click on there and get some more information about that. Okay, and then further down here, you can see some things around how your traffic uh, is flowing and what's going on. Like if I look at frequent conversations, I can see that my uh, jump server and my domain controller talk quite a bit. And you can look at what the flows are doing there. And then you can look at that at the VNet view, the subnet view, or the IP view. And then look at how your NSGs are taking a hit, what traffic is blocked, uh, traffic that has been labeled as malicious traffic, and what the rules are that are getting the most hits. Okay, and then you can look at that same kind of data along specific ports. So you can see here in traffic analysis, tremendous amount of information that's here. So jump in and take a look at all of that and what it's doing for you. So we looked at uh, stuff along the network watcher here as an extension of the Azure monitor. And that kind of brings us to uh, the end of this video. So I hope that you found this overview of the Azure monitor and what it can do interesting. Uh, hope that you would like our video here, subscribe, comment, uh, let us know what you're interested in, uh, new series perhaps that uh, you'd like to see us do, or some more videos on uh, existing series that we already have got a new video roughly once a week uh, you can follow us on uh, twitter at at ms azure academy and you can also follow me on linkedin as well as subscribe to our youtube channel and hit that notification button and don't forget to like the video happy learning